No One Will Save You, the latest sci-fi horror thriller released from Hulu. I'm going to break down my honest thoughts and feelings about the film and invite you to share yours down below. Double heads up, there'll be spoilers ahead and our second channel, The Horror Exchange, has now released its first video. Check the links below for that. Right, so this one was a rather recent viral phenomenon with the trailer doing numbers on social media only a few weeks ago before this film's streaming release. You always get horror movie trends come and go, but it feels like the hostile alien alien genre has had a little rest and was ready to get another popular culture kick. Now, due to its premise and genre framework, this does mean the film possesses some common threads to past instalments, lending pieces of Signs, A Quiet Place and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. However, though No One Will Save You is a sum of unoriginal parts, the way it aligns them is done in a way that was super enjoyable to me, while on the whole coming off feeling like a fresh production. A big factor for this to me is how, with the exception of one line, there is no explicit dialogue throughout the film. Everything's told through body language, facial expressions and muttered responses, providing you with a mostly visual narrative. And it doesn't dilly-dally about either. We are introduced to our protagonist named Bryn. Bryn. She's played tremendously by Caitlin Deaver, who provides such an impressive performance. Having no lines to rely on, everything was down to her range of micro expressions, and as such I felt so much more connected to her character. We get a quick glimpse at her living out in the sticks. She writes letters to a friend she lost as a child, and just as an added bonus we learn she's into crafting and old fashioned aesthetics. That's all you need. The character's being built, then we are straight into the action. The pace in No One Will Save You rarely falters. It gives you breathing spaces to recover from from tense sequences, which due to being told through action, wound up pulling me into scenes and dragging me along with them, needing little effort to do so. The crux of the story here is your standard alien invasion film, yet written and directed by Brian Duffield in a way where it was still exciting to watch it unfold. If not handled well, there could have been a big risk of eye rolling and a degree of, I've seen this before. Hardcore fans of the genre may think this, yet as side sci-fi horror isn't one of my personal favourite horror subgenres, I am much more of a casual watcher, I was still able to remain engaged. A massive help for that was the presentation of the alien threat. I mean, yeah, it does depend on the traditional grey alien look, but adds some bloody sick elements to how they are shown. The build up to their reveal is really cool, since Bryn sees the alien through distorting glass, which leaves a blurred impression on the viewer. The noises they make are are seriously eerie as well. It's a croaking throat sound akin to a predator but still different. It's done in like stuttering bursts, almost like laughter. It's such an unnerving sound though, and again, it has similarities to genre stalwarts but adds its own spin to it. The limbs of the aliens in particular are an awesome touch too. They like crack and snap when the aliens move. It's like they're contortionists, and they move in an almost mechanical way. Now and again, you'll see them just twitching. At one point, one of them does the exorcist spider walk, which is always a huge noop. And even the design of their feet is horrendous. They look like Thing from Adam's Family. It messed me up. Later, they use their limbs to communicate as well, which I found worked well within the film's more visual storytelling method. And it was just interesting seeing how they use their limbs in different ways. When combined with their telekinetic abilities and parasitic spreading, I really enjoyed the design of the aliens and their mostly CGI nature didn't particularly bother me like it usually does, they still felt like a formidable foe to Bryn. She puts up a good fight as well, with plenty of cat and mousing going on, and those fearful of having to slap a Mary Sue sticker over the film will be glad that she actually takes a battering here. She's thrown through wall, she's knocked out, she's stabbed, proper messed up. But she's not just physically smashed to all about, emotionally she is too. The existence of the Maud subplot, who is her friend she lost as a kid, it did add quite a lot for me here. Th 
through how it was put across. We can identify that Bryn lost her friend and still misses her, but it's not until Bryn heads into town for help where we are given some hints that all might not be well. She's spat in the face and met with stunned silence by a police officer who shares Maud's surname, Collins. This was really clever storytelling, showing you the story, not dangling the carrot too close to your eyes. Now you know there was another main ingredient to what you've previously cooked up in your mind, and this is something that helped to maintain my interest in the film through the alien side to the story. No One Will Save You is a production that wound up piercing far more in more emotional levels than I anticipated. This comes from the discovery that the aliens are able to clone people, and when looking back on her childhood, Bryn is shown the suppressed memory of her killing Maud's clone. The real Maud was abducted. This is why Bryn lives in isolation and is loathed by townsfolk. She has a stigma that she was responsible for Maud's death, like she's some kind of killing machine. This in itself is an interesting plot thread, but the fact it ties into the alien storyline is double smart to me. Bryn isn't half pursued by the aliens wanting to abduct her and study her, and my personal take on this is that she herself is a threat to them. She kills the first alien early on in the film, another nice surprise instead of this being the lone alien of the film. Bryn is also resilient to further attacks and shows her strength with her offence and defence. And when we get to the point where she finally is captured and studied, she's looked at with kind of stern expressions by the aliens and ultimately let go. I interpreted the ending here, with Bryn being let go and then returning to a paradise version of the town, as the aliens going, whew, we're not going to mess with her, get rid of her, then we'll make the town around her this beautiful heaven that matches her personality, so that she can just kind of live there suppressed and not want to leave and take down us. It was an odd yet fun way to end the film, and I've seen quite a few comments already on socials of people not really understanding what's happened here with everyone smiling and waving at Bryn, wearing her sense of fashion, dancing just like she does to music she loves. I interpreted this as the aliens going, there you go, there's a bubble town you can live in where you don't want to come and fight back against the rest of our invasion. Because we do see a fully fledged operation by the aliens here. This was a slight criticism of mine though, as the reveal of multiple spaceships in the sky a bit later on in the film was nullified by by the sight of multiple circles on Bryn's lawn outside her house earlier in the film. Despite this, there's no telling what the true intentions of their invasion is or what is going on in other parts of the world. It could be that they've done similar things for other people in the world, perhaps targeting people like Bryn who resisted previous invasion attempts. Simply trying to speculate the organism of No One Will Save You is incredibly fun. It's absolutely something that the viewer can take their own meaning from, and the lack of contextual dialogue leaves even more space for the audience to apply their own feelings just like I have. So I'd love to hear how you interpreted this ending. One thing I'm definitely going to praise on a production level is the film's sound design. Because of that lack of speech, the driving force of the sound comes through its score and audio landscape. All the sounds of the house, the aliens, the spaceships and their devices, it's an incredible achievement that I was able to hone in on. Joseph Trapanese on the music and Daniel Eisen on the sound mixing. Take a couple of bows there lads, masterful work. Honestly I had such a blast with No One Will Save You. To me it was an almost faultless roller coaster, taking strong elements from its inspirations but not in a lazy way. It doesn't waste time with unnecessary filler, everything links to a later part in the film and it doesn't linger too long for the nitty gritty stuff to start. Despite being an hour and a half long, Long, it actually felt longer to me. Not in a negative sense, like it was dragging on, but in a sense that they packed a lot of stuff in there to sink your teeth into, or stick your parasite into, so to speak. Caitlin Diva may have been the sole main character here, but that doesn't mean her being the star of the show was by default. I can't wait to see more productions with her. With a face as expressive as hers, something like, I don't know, like a giallo film or an all out splatter film might be able to harness her strengths. I'm really glad I got abducted onto this film's radar, and it gets a big double elongated thumbs up from me. But that's just my honest review of 
of 2023's No One Will Save You. What's yours? Let me know down below. While there, don't forget to check the link to the Horror Exchange. I'm Connor from Unleash the Goals, and I'll see you next time for another honest review. Cheers out.